Unload resistant item preprocessor, empty shulker box storage, empty shulker box request system, and much more. It's been a while, so let's get into it. Before the storage system project can even begin sorting items, those items first need to be packed into mixed shulker boxes. And that's where the item preprocessor comes into play. It soaks up loose items that have coming in, and it separates them from shulker boxes, and then packs those loose items into mixed shulker boxes so they can be buffered at the sequential shulker unloader buffer storage until the storage system has to guarantee a chunk loading and can start running. This was one of my initial item preprocessors. Unfortunately, it is not resistant to being unloaded. It will break if it gets unloaded, which is a real problem because ideally you want to buffer items into shulker boxes because that's the most efficient way of doing things. And alternatively, if I'd say buffered items into double chests, well, that's slow to load and slow to unload. So it's not really ideal. What I want is an item preprocessor and that can run without the guarantee of chunk loading. I need something that is unload resistant. And that is what I have made right over here. This design is unload resistant, self-fixing, 10 times hopper speed item processing, and you even have a little dolphin buddy here to reset the item despawn timer of items going around here in the loop. Up to five free wide tileable item processing modules can be used, each module capable of double hopper speed and having its own mixed shulker box loader. Should end of this system end of go inactive for more than 15 minutes, then all the shulker boxes within the item preprocessor will be purged, configurable via this hopper clock. Just as important as unload resistance is not losing my items. In 1.17 testing with Carpet Mod Extreme Behaviors True, I found and that this system will lose one item for every 7.7 thousand shulker boxes filled. 7.7 thousand shulker boxes. That's not items, shulker boxes. And more importantly, no shulker boxes are lost. Since 1.19, droppers have gotten a cap to how random they can be, so I suspect that since 1.19, this system is completely reliable, will never lose items. It is possible for items to end up in the output of the item preprocessor. To help mitigate this, I simply added another shulker box filter, so rejected items will get sent up and back for the main loop. Of course, this is not a bulletproof solution. In order to absolutely guarantee that I don't get any items into the shulker output here, I would need chunk loading. So my sequential shulker unloader input system is also going to have a shulker box filter that runs with the guarantee of chunk loading as just one last check so that way no items no raw items will be sent through the SSU. Now the item preprocessor does come with some very specific building requirements. For one it must be aligned into within a chunk exactly that way no critical red zone crosses chunk borders. Additionally the build itself is directional so no rotating at plus or minus 90 degrees. There isn't really anything remarkable about the item preprocessor module. There's a lot of redundant redstone here in order to make it re work reliably when it can be unloaded at any moment, in order to make sure that if it borks itself, quote unquote, it unborks itself, so no player intervention is ever required. If the requirement for unload resistance was stripped away, it could be simplified greatly because at the end of the day, it's literally just a pair of shulker box filters strapped on top of a mixed double speed shulker box loader. It took a lot of testing and iterations in order to arrive upon this design. For example, I ran into an issue where if it was unloaded at just the right moment when the shulker box breaking sequence was supposed to occur, then it wouldn't. The shulker box wouldn't get broken. To fix that, I had to add a comparator fader over here, and if it reaches signal shape zero, it'll repower itself and trigger the shulker box breaking sequence again. And that's not to mention a whole myriad of just issues where items just glitch out into weird spots and then despawn and oh my goodness it was a lot of freaking headache but eventually finally i did get it all to work 
Could I compact the module more, optimize it? Maybe, sure, I probably could given enough time, but the fact of the matter is I finally have arrived on something that works, so I'm just gonna be sickened with it. This isn't something that's gonna get tiled like a hundred times within my sword system project. At most, I'll tile it five times. It's not really a big deal. And with a hopper count of 10 hoppers per module, it's not a big deal in terms of hopper count either. I have told myself, and other people even, multiple times that I am not going to switch to MISV5 for my sword system project. So, about that. Originally, I was preset on my existing storage hall, opting to try and get the project done rather than endlessly iterate. But I just couldn't help myself. I finally gotten around to evaluating MISV5 for my sword system project, and I simply cannot ignore it. Versus the modified version of 4.1 that I was originally intending to use, V5 is one third of the performance cost in vanilla Minecraft, and about half the performance cost when using lithium. Once scaled up to 84 slices for the full sword system project, we're talking a significant performance savings here, all without the need to pre-fill a bunch of containers to specific signal strengths during construction. The only downside is the increased space requirement, so I had to bump out the shulker sorter by a bit and add an another double chest and hopper to the bulk storage, which did increase bulk storage capacity to 635,000 items. I've experienced many problems in trying to find a suitable unsackable sorter for my sword system project. I've gone through a number of designs and found into one after another to just unfortunately not be 100% reliable. Fortunately, that ends today. At the heart of the unsackable sorter for my sword system project is a Command Leo 1.17 to 1.19 unsackable sorter. Most importantly, this design has been 100% reliable in my testing. There is one small caveat though, and that is that 1.19.3 and onwards, this thing no longer sorts water buckets. Water buckets just get eaten up and the empty bucket gets dispensed and left to despawn. Not really that big of an issue, it's not something I'm really too fussed about, especially considering I'm already going to be soaring a way better version of water buckets within my sword system project, but it's still something nonetheless. 1.20 makes it possible to filter music discs and enchanted books, so I've bolted into those filters onto the unsackable sorter as well, designs also by Command Leo. And of course, into the uh, arrow supply, into for the armor sorter portion of the unsackable sorter, uh, I have a shulker box unloader here that provides arrows, along with two double chests of storage. And it's even hopper locked! I mean, it's not really that important for it to be hopper locked. But it is. Bolted onto the end of the system is eight slices of Allay sorted for some of those unsackables that you just can't sort any other way. Now, of course, this doesn't mean I can sort every unsackable in the game, and nor would I really want to. Having that many Allays would definitely add up in terms of entity lag. It's not really ideal. So I figured eight Allays here, eight slices. That's probably a good amount and allows me to pick and choose and which unsackables and that I want to have automatically sorted. Now, of course, Allay sorting is is slower than normal sorting. It's 1.8 popper speed instead of hopper speed. So I do have a buffer chest here for VLA sorter and if this buffer chest ends up filling up it will momentarily pause the main unsackable sorter here in order to give it some time to catch up. And of course I have all my hookups for sword system control up here along with an output into for a system fault that will trigger and if uh, I end up running low on arrows for the unsackable sorter or if the buffer storage here for the unsackable sorter overflows. For my unsackable storage, I wanted to use an accessible shulker box loader. I started out with this design by VK Tech and then proceeded to modify it to slightly compact it. And here is everything put together. I had originally intended to have my unsackable storage and just sacked on top of some bulk storage, but uh, ultimately for my project I decided against that and decided to give my unsackable storage a dedicated area. The benefit of this is that I get more storage and I even have a shulker display here at the bottom. So I don't have to pull out a shulker box, open it, grab the item and put the shulker box back and of like I would if I had sacked it on top of my bulk storage. Of course, here's the accessible shulker loader, so no matter where the unsackables are, they are always accessible. There are four double chests of boxed storage for each unsackable item here, and there is no overflow handling for this, but 
considering that each slice can store over 6,000 unsackable items, I didn't really see it as necessary, and hey, I can always go ahead and throw a system fault if a slice happens to fill up. Additionally, if a slice happens to have more than three double chests and is filled with unsackable items, it will illuminate the corresponding indicator lamp to indicate that the slice is greater than 75% filled. MISC unsackables are your sword over here. Additionally, I have some manual barrel unsackable storage here and some more manual unsackable storage right over here. Additionally, if and when I ever need empty shulker boxes, as you typically do, I can always get them here from this chest. In total, and for the storage and the sorting of the unsackable sorter, it took about 300 hoppers, of which half of them are kept locked when not needed. Next to unsackables, I have overflow handling. Right here, I have where overflow and unsorted items will end up from the MIS. I have a pair of accessible shulker box loaders here. If uh, any items happen to be in either one of them, then and the corresponding lamps here will illuminate. Same for the storage down here if there happens to be at least one shulker box in either or both of the storages. Next to that I have bulk overflow. I have a button and if I'll empty and of all of this storage out and send it to some other location wherever I happen to pipe the water stream. For example if I wanted to send it to the end. And additionally I have a button that does that automatically and any future overflow and if that would end up here just bypasses this storage and goes to say the end if I want to send my overflow there. Currently, this is my hopper locked empty shulker box storage, which can store up to 4.6 thousand empty shulker boxes. At the top of the storage, I have the input for the empty shulker boxes. They first will go through a shulker box filter to verify they are actually shulker boxes, and then an is empty shulker box filter that I yoinked off the storage tech discord to make sure that they are in fact empty shulker boxes. So that way no other items or shulker boxes with items will ever end up into this storage. Of course, to ensure the reliability of the filters, chunk loading is required. Therefore, no new shulker boxes will be put into the empty shulker box storage unless chunk loading is currently active. There are three double chests at the top and bottom of this storage that act as a buffer. When the top and the buffer fills up or the bottom buffer empties out, it will cause and of all the hoppers to unlock in the storage for a period of time, allowing new shulker boxes to flow through. Controlling the hopper locking in this storage is this nifty little instantly resettable timer. So how it works is whenever a signal comes in, it will power this comparator memory cell into two signal strength 15. And then this comparator fader, whenever it reaches signal strength 0, will decrement the value in here by 1, all the way until it reaches signal strength 0, at which point the hoppers will relock. I first became aware of this nifty little end of circuit from a video end of by Pawa Pawa, and since then I have found it to be very useful. So much so that I basically use multiple variants of this circuit throughout my sword system project. This empty box storage was designed before end of the announcement of the crafter coming in 1.21. As such, I feel like 1.21 and onwards, I probably would want to have a smaller empty box storage, maybe only soaring up to a thousand shulker boxes, and then simply have crafters craft more as needed. Anyways, until then, for now, I'm going to use this, but once 1.21 rolls around, I'll probably very quickly be replacing it. Throughout my base I intend to have many farms and various contraptions, all of which will have one thing in common. They will require empty shulker boxes, and those empty shulker boxes are going to be supplied by the empty shulker box request system. Each one wide tileable section of this system acts as its own channel, servicing a limited section of the base via a tree of water streams that branches out to the various locations and farms that will need empty shulker boxes. Whenever an endpoint requires more empty shulker boxes, it will send a redstone signal down the tree of water streams all the way to the trunk of the system, at which point the system will batch up 55 shulker boxes and then send them down and out through the tree of water streams. The path which the bundle of shulker boxes takes in order to reach its destination is determined by where the request initially came from. So for every intersection, depending on where the signal is coming from, determines where the bundle of shulker boxes will head. And once the shulker boxes reach their destination, and the request for more shulker boxes will be terminated. 
Whenever a slice or channel of this system services a request, it will go on cooldown. And that cooldown is configurable via this hopper clock. Now, what the cooldown should be configured to is really dependent on how big into the tree of water streams is that it's servicing. If it's a really big tree of water streams, then you don't want the cooldown to be too short because otherwise you may end up servicing the same request twice. The first batch of stroker boxes may not reach the destination before the cooldown expires and therefore you end up sending another batch to that destination. Obviously not a good thing, so this will vary depending on what the size of the network is. Also, this system has no problem servicing requests and when multiple endpoints are requesting shulker boxes at the same time. Simply what it will do is batch up a load of shulker boxes and then send it off to one of the destinations. Once the cooldown period expires, it will then batch up another batch of shulker boxes and send it off to the next location, so on and so forth. So long as the redstone signal going in here is on, it will service those requests. And while in theory I could just have one channel servicing the entirety of my base, in practice it could potentially produce a bottleneck. So therefore I'm going to have multiple channels, each channel servicing its own dedicated section of my base. Now this whole system does have one devastating edge case, and that is what if a destination requests shulker boxes and then becomes unloaded but the system itself servicing the request is still loaded and therefore just ends up endlessly sending into batches of shulker boxes to that destination and since they never make it because chunk isn't loaded then this thing just ends up emptying out all my shulker boxes. So and what I'm going to do to mitigate that is use something to intercept the incoming signals and only pass them through to the system when certain conditions are met. For channels servicing ends of empty shulker requests within the chunk loading grid, those ends of signals are going to require that chunk loading is either active or a player is in the area for the request to be serviced. That way, if say I'm out of the area and something's going on that's using chunk loading and it needs more shulker boxes, it can still get more shulker boxes. And then anything that exists outside the chunk loading grid will be on its own set of channels and will need ends of to confirm that a player is in the area before servicing the request. For determining whether or not the player is in the area or not, I have two possible methods I could use. One is I could simply run a rail line out and around the perimeter of my base, and if I send a signal out and I get a signal back, then that means all the chunks that the rail traveled through are loaded, and therefore the internal area probably also loaded. Uh, alternatively, I could use a random tick detector. So I could have many of these slices set up and with enough of them, I can detect whether or not a player is nearby because random ticks will only occur when the player is within a certain distance of a particular block that could be random ticked. The rail method isn't exactly all that elegant and well, requires a whole bunch of rails. Kind of ridiculous. I think the better option here will be to use a random tick detector. The control panel has received some minor updates. For one, if a system fault is thrown, it will cause the storage system to shut down. Second, there I have added an external system status lamp. So this is for systems that plug into the chunk loading grid that aren't the storage system itself. So think I have a furnace smelter, for example, and I want that to utilize and request chunk loading. Well, it would be represented in this external system status. Third, I've removed the Q mode function as I didn't really anticipate myself ever using it. Fourth, I've added active standby. When the system is in auto and active standby is turned on, the chunk loading grid will be forced on. And finally, I have moved the item inputs. So the general input that I can just dump anything into is right here. And then the farm input where I can only input shulker boxes full of a single item type to be sorted directly into bulk storage can be inputted here. This is the storage system thus far. Most of the components are currently in place, but there's still plenty of work left to do. The overall layout of the storage halls is that in the shape of an H, with there being two main halls and a small connecting hall in between. The first main hall contains the control panel and the bulk of the storage, with 84 MIS categories and 168 slices of bulk. 
The connecting hull contains an additional 48 slices of bulk. However, this bulk storage is not addressable to minecart item requests like the main storage hull is, so I have to be mindful about what items I allocate here. The second hull is for my unsackable storage, overflow handling, and any peripherals I want to add onto the system, such as crafting, potion brewing, and furnace smelting. Progress has been very slow on getting everything together for my storage system here, but once I'm finished hooking everything up, wiring everything together, getting all the last components in place, this will be it. My storage system will be done. Anyways everyone, that is going to be it for this video. The next episode will be the final episode of this series, and hopefully I'll actually get it out in a reasonable time frame. Until next time, I'll catch y'all later. Bye.